Okay, looking at the other features here, this is for auxiliary power. Um, so this is where you're using the generator or the auxiliary as a generator input. You can use it as an output or you can use it for microinverters. Uh, it's very useful. You can use it for many different things. And one, a lot of people use it for auxiliary outputs where they would split the power between the auxiliary and the load for islanding mode. And therefore, as your batteries deplete, the auxiliary will cut first and the load will cut last. So you'll have a three stage. You'll have your on grid for your non-essential, you have your source of essentials, but you can lose, and you have your absolute essentials. So you can work on that way in using using the auxiliary. And if you've got a microinverter system, you can use a microinverter where it will create the environment for microinverters. Again, I will cover a little bit more about how to use that later on. Okay, most important thing, this is the heart of the system, the system control or the system mode. This is the thing that works and everything works around it. So this is so, so important. This part here is a real timer. If I click use timer, it will use timer. The use of the timer is at a certain time of day, it will do a certain function. So if I set it from one o'clock here and I want it to charge the batteries to 100%, it will charge the batteries to 100%. Um, by, if the unit is not ticked, and you put a function on a certain time, it will discharge the batteries to 100%. So here at one o'clock, it will charge to 100%. At five o'clock, it will discharge to 100%. Here is showing zero export. So basically, um, this will, will basically allow no export back to the grid. The CT coil will block it. So it's very important. And it will discharge the battery um, it will dump the battery, it will allow the discharge to the load and it will allow it to discharge to 100%. And then by clicking on here, it could be charging 100% again from the, from the generator. I can choose the percentage I want, with what I wanted to do. So it's a very nice use f f function. Here is zero export. Um, there are a couple of other functions on here which are very useful. Here, I can prioritize, so I switch this, this off, I'll use that. I can prioritize the solar panel to the load. So basically, when the sun is shining, the solar will power the load first and charge the battery secondly. If I untick it, it will prioritize the batteries first and the load secondary. So very important, what I want to do with the solar. If I want the solar to power my load and get the best benefit of it that way on real time, I click here, prioritize the load. If I want it to prioritize to the um, battery first, then I untick it. So it's a very useful feature. Here, we have a couple more buttons here. Solar export when battery is full. So if battery is full, I can allow it to export the power if I want to. When the battery is completely full and I've used everything else, it will export the power because there's nothing else to do with the power. I can choose to export it only when the battery is full. And here, I can then limit the, limit the power to the load only. This bit here, zero export power. Well, in South Africa, in some countries, you use prepaid meters. And because you've got some variance, when the, the CT coil can sometimes allow a little bit of current to link through it, so we try to let the power come one way. So typically we might program this to say 80 watts is a, is a good figure. Um, and this will allow 80 watts of power to come through the grid and that way there's always some power flowing through the grid. It makes it very difficult to export anything back to the grid and it will save tripping a prepaid meter. It's very important. This box here, maximum cell power. Actually, this is the maximum power of the inverter. This throttles the inverter. So we've got an eight kilowatt inverter. And if I set the eight kilowatt inverter to five, that means the maximum power the inverter can run is five kilowatt. So often people would set this to nine kilowatt, which might be the, which is often, which is the maximum, absolute maximum power of the uh, inverter. Um, it's absolute limit, which is nine. So you, you set here, uh, this is on an 8.8. .8. Always press OK. Go back to make sure it's got the done. If you don't press OK, it won't keep the memory. So always press OK. This is the heart. This is the thing you need to really understand. If you can understand this screen, you understand the inverter. This is what all about. So this is what. So there is one other very useful screen. If you click the bar chart, you see this flow. 
This is great. This I love this. Well, in fact, there's another screen I can show you, but this is great. This shows you what's going on here. So you can see here, I've got grid, volt, grid voltage, and my grid is flowing in to the inverter and it's flow is a very just using a very small power 40 watts which is the inverter quiescent current quiescent means it's minimum standby current which is about 40 watts here you can see the two mppts they're not connected to anything at the moment so there's not a lot going on and you see my battery and my state of charge here so this is just showing a, a general overview it's a very nice screen it's a flow chart it's a real flow chart it's got arrows and everything it shows real time this is beautiful this is beautiful and it shows real time exactly what is going what is going on if you do click any of the other you get this other screen which is just basically a list of the functions so showing a battery as, as basically it's a, it's a spreadsheet it's a little spreadsheet so showing the, the information on a spreadsheet so it's showing the battery it's showing your two mppts your grid power your load power everything on a spreadsheet so you've got a spreadsheet view or you've got a, a flow view so you've got two views there which are really which are really useful um the other parts on here um the, what i haven't covered is fault codes and i'm going to show a few fault codes because this is a demonstration unit and basically you can examine it if you've got a fault code something's come up you can examine it and obviously investigating the reason for it so that's basically the function and the flow in a nutshell of course there are far more complicated things when we're looking at paralleling and we're looking at drms and lots and lots of things which i will cover separately because otherwise you'll be there forever